Thank you for watching part one of my personal experience with the digital technology in the area of learning and teaching. Now this is part two uh, of two, this is the last part. And in this video we are going to see what happened to me when I came to Norway. Uh, when I came to Norway, I became more interested in integrating digital technology in the classroom. In the summer of uh, 2012, I did a summer course called Latina. Now, Latina is all about learning and teaching in a digital world. And after that course, uh, that, that summer course, I continued working with Latina Lab. Latina is part of Oslo and Akasus University College. Uh, Latina aims at equipping practical e-learning skills to the people for the purpose of integrating digital technology in their daily activities. Now, what was my way forward? What came into my mind was turning my old teaching materials into a digitized uh, format. Uh, I had some materials I had prepared as we saw. I, uh, we, I talked of the practical I carried out and then I had some Microsoft document and this Microsoft document, I turned it into a Google document. Now, with Google document, uh, you can put your material there, and it is it is there. You you just get it anywhere from anywhere. It is kept in space, and you just need a Gmail account. That's all and you can do whatever you want. It is helpful with the Gmail. Now, if we can look at uh, what I did using the Google Docs, this is the practical Sivanasis test of sand, and these are the contents. Now, you can put as many things as you can, but I turned the same document into an ebook. So let us uh, look at the ebook. An ebook, uh, to me, it is simply designed to be read on tablets on smartphones, on computers, and so on and so forth. So if we can look at the example of an ebook, this is an ebook I made, and these are the table of contents. You can navigate through the table of content or you can click. So this is seven ISIS tests of sand and you can put uh, pictures, you can put movies if you want, maybe let us watch a little bit of this movie. W.S. Tyler presents Performing Accurate Testing. Despite technology changing as so rapidly, our current technology is still being tested as a cost-effective and precise measuring instrument for dry, non-agglomerating particles. Test sieve analysis is widely used for quality control in many industries worldwide. 
The test sipping process is a simple and common practice to measure particle size in dry, relatively free-flowing materials. Particle distribution data is then used to analyze material size. There are five basic elements of testing. Test sips, test shakers, sample materials and preparation, running the test, recording results and analysis. So that is a, a video I, 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 I placed in the ebook, and then we can have like the tools. These are tools. You can have quite a number of tools which are used in the practical. You can have the procedures. We can insert in as many videos as you can in an ebook. For example, this is also another video. So, it's, uh, you can put in more information as you want in an ebook. You just play around with it and uh, it works. This is the third video, but we are not going to look through it. And these are calculations, the formulas. Someone can look through the formulas and can do the, uh, do the practical, calculate, make calculations and then tablet and make conclusion and there are references now with the references you can click and you read much information uh, so let us look at um, uh, the reflection now and then after I intend to be, learning should be more student-centered when you are using digital technology. And then the workplace is considered as a learning place. Think of your workplace, should be a learning place. And then what happens to the classroom? The classroom now comes into sharing of experiences, what you have got from the field. Then both in the classroom, both the students and the educator are learners. Then integrating locally available digital technology in the classroom, for example, as I showed you, these are popular in Uganda and these are coming more cheaper. China is producing more cheaper things, so they are coming to Uganda very soon. So you find that we can integrate all the digital technology devices. We can integrate each and everything. And then the materials created can be used over and over again. For example, this video you can watch as many times as you can and I can only edit, keep on editing. And our favorite sharing of materials using social media. Now Facebook, many Ugandans are on Facebook. Uh, many Ugandans have Gmail accounts, the Yahoo accounts. There are others on Twitter. So. We can share the information using this material, this social media. In conclusion, integrating digital technology in learning and teaching is a necessity 
in today's education system. Uh, many innovations of digital technology software and devices are at our disposal. Other times they may confuse us. As an educator, when it comes to choosing the best devices and software to integrate in the classroom, the needs of the students come first. Hope you are not tired with me. Uh, bear with me a little bit and think of this question. Thank you very much for watching part two of two of my personal experience with digital technology in learning and teaching. Let me go back to the kitchen and cook more stuff for you.